In this video, I show how to set up lifetime free hosting on Google Cloud Platform, how to create a project in Google Cloud Platform, how to point your domain to another provider, how to set up subdomains, how to get a free SSL certificate, how to redirect all your domains to one domain, and it requires no coding. I review some of the drawbacks to Google Cloud Platform. Why go with Google? I went to Google. I had my website up and migrated within 4 hours. Plus, unlike all the other hosting companies that will give you free hosting, and then after the first year make you pay, Google is always free. However, there are some drawbacks being with Google, and I will get to them at the end of this video. Please hit like, leave a comment, or subscribe. Thank you. The links to all of the services and products mentioned. And a link to my YouTube channel will be in the description below. All you have to do is expand the description. And you will see all the links. Start. To sign up. You need three things. 1. You need a mobile phone for 10 minutes. Google will text message a code to your mobile phone. 2. You need a credit card, a debit card, or a PayPal account. Google will not charge your account unless you opt out of the free tier. 3. You need a business name. The business name can be your name. It does not matter what the name is. See this at the top. Activate it. You want the free money. This will allow you to see how much everything will cost without having to pay. It will allow you to test Google's other services for free. If you mess up, this will allow you to fix it without it costing you money. Create a project. The first thing you have to do is create a project. A project is like a folder that stores everything you do relating to your website. At the top, click my first project. Then click new project. Now, give your project a name. And hit create. Go back to the top. And click on the project you just created. Creating a computer. You have to create a VM or virtual machine. Basically, you are creating a computer within Google's computer with all the software to run and operate your website. Go to the hamburger menu in the top left side. And click Marketplace. Look for WordPress certified by Bitnami. You do not want the others. I know it says that it will cost $13. But do not worry about this. This is only if you are not on the free tier. Go to the top. And click launch. This page tells Google what kind of computer you want. To create it. And then deploy it. Give the deployment any name you want. Pick either US West 1, US Central 1, or US East 1. If you pick anything else you will have to pay. For the VM instance, pick F1 Micro. Remember, the F1 Micro is part of Google's always free plan. You have to pick the size and type of hard drive you want. The standard persistent disk is part of the free plan. But the SSD is much better. And you will notice the difference. If you pick the SSD you will have to pay the extra 17 cents a gigabyte. This means that a 10 gigabyte hard drive will cost an extra $1.70. Check both HTTP and HTTPS. Click Deploy. And wait 5 to 10 minutes for Google to create and deploy your computer or virtual machine. On the right side, copy all of it and save it because you will need it later. As you can see, I used Microsoft Word. I got the Nun subscription version. For Mac it cost $70. And for PC it cost $150. It works on both 2021 PC and Mac. I will leave the links in the description below. Since we are here let's see what your website looks like. Click this link. At the top you can see that your website does not have the padlock. 
which means that your website is not secure. If your website does not have a full padlock, then the search engines will not list your website, which means no one will be able to find your website. We will fix this. Now, let's look at the back end of your website. Click this link. Type user and copy and paste in the password. Now, let's make sure everything is updated. Let's do a double check and make sure all the plugins are also updated. Now, log out. Static IP. You have to make the IP permanent, which is called making the IP a static IP. At the top left side, go to VPC network and go down to external IP addresses. Click ephemeral and then click static. Then give it any name you want. Now, click reserve. The IP associated with your website is now permanent until you decide to delete it. DNS records. You have to create DNS records. The DNS records tell the world where your website is located. At the top left side, go to Network Services and go down to Cloud DNS. Make sure you are in the right project. Now, click Enable. Click Create Zone. You want the world to be able to access your website. Click Public. The zone name can be any name. However, it must be lowercase. The DNS name must be your domain name. Make sure this part is set to off. Now, click Create. NS Records. This part is called pointing your website to another provider. If you cannot do this part yourself, then tell your hosting provider that you are trying to use your NS records to point your website to another provider. And they should know what you mean. These four records are the NS records. These records tell the world where your website is located. Copy all four of the NS records. Do not copy the period. The period will mess things up. Now, you have to go to where you got your domain name. I got my domain name from GoDaddy. I have to go into GoDaddy's DNS records and change GoDaddy's NS records to these NS records. You have to do the same thing at the place where you got your domain name. Paste each NS record without the period. It is very important that you leave out the period. This tells the world that my website is not with GoDaddy but with Google. This can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few days to take effect. Linking the IP to the domain and the subdomains. You have to link the IP to the domain and the subdomains. To do this you have to create an A record for the main domain, and a C name record for each subdomain you want to create. At the top left side, go to Network Services, and go down to Cloud DNS. Follow everything I do here, but with your domain name. First the A record. Click Add Record Set. The A record links the IP with your domain name. All you have to do here is paste in the site IP address. And click Create. The C name record tells the world what other domain names are associated with the main domain. Click Add Record Set. For the DNS name, type www. The www is a subdomain. The canonical name is the main domain name. Then, click Create. What is the main topic of your website? The main topic of my website is bankruptcy. I am going to make a C name record with the name bankruptcy. This will help my website to rank higher in the search engines. Now my website address will be 
https colon slash slash bankruptcy.diify.com. Since I could not get bankruptcy.com, this is almost as good. This tells the search engines that every page of my website is about bankruptcy. Click. Add record set. Now. For the DNS name. Type the subdomain you want to create. For me this is bankruptcy. The canonical name is the main domain name. Then. Click create. Now I have two subdomains. Which is bankruptcy, and the other is www. SSL certificate. You have to make your website secure. And get the padlock at the top. You do this by getting an SSL certificate. Without an SSL certificate. The search engines will not list your website. If the search engines do not list your website, then no one will be able to find your website. This part can take anywhere from a few minutes to three days. This is because in the previous step you updated the NS records and the DNS records. And this can take a few minutes to a few days to take effect. Whenever you update any part of the DNS records, it can take a few minutes to a few days to take effect. If the following does not work, then try in a few hours or the next day. Now, go to Compute Engine, then VM Instances. Click SSH. It will take a few minutes for the screen to pop up. All of the following codes are in the description below. Now copy and paste the following code. Now type all the domain names you might want to use. But make sure that each is separated by a space. For my website, I will use what you see here. Since I did not make a C name record for the subdomain of www.bankruptcy, I cannot use it until I do. This line asks if you always want to use HTTPS and not the HTTP version. The answer is always yes. This line asks if you want to always show the www version. Like https colon slash slash www.diify.com. If you are not going to use any other subdomain, then the answer is always yes. Since I will be using bankruptcy.diify.com as my main domain, then my answer is no. This line asks the opposite of the previous line. This line asks if you want to always show the none www version. Like https colon slash slash diify.com. If you answered yes to the previous line then no is the answer to this line. For this line the answer is yes. For this line paste in your email address. For this line the answer is yes. Now, you have to wait 5 to 10 minutes for it to create the SSL certificate. Click enter on your keyboard. And then type exit. And now you are done. When you check your website, it still might not have the padlock. Just wait 5 to 10 minutes and the padlock should show. Configure the website. You have to configure your website. Which of the domains do you want to be your website's domain? The domain you want to use for your website is the one you have to log into. Like you see here. Type the domain you want to use and add slash WP admin. The user's name will be user, and the password will be the one Google created. On the left side, go to the tab labeled user, and add a new user, which will be you. For the username, put the name you want to use when you log into your website. Remember, you will not be able to change it later. Fill out all of the rest. At this time your website cannot send any emails. Having your website being able to send emails is important. Because without it you cannot use a contact us form. And your website will not be able to let you know if someone tried to break in. I will make a video on how to set up email for a website. The role you want to give yourself as administrator. 
Then click Add New User. Now, log out. And then log in, under the user's name you created. You always want to log in under your name, because any pages or posts you create will be under your name. If you delete a user, then everything that user created might also be deleted. When you create your website, you want to create mostly posts and not pages. They both work the same way. But post has features that will help with search engines. Now, go to the tab on the right side labeled settings. And then go to permalinks. Click the tab labeled post name. And then click save. Post name is the form that most websites use because it provides a description of the website page in the address bar. Website security. I'm going to make a video on website security, but this is the best thing you can do. This plugin saved my website. People will be trying to break into your website from day one. If anyone tries a brute force attack, then this plugin will stop them. A brute force attack is the most common attack. Plus, it keeps a log of all the attacks. Go to Plugins and go to Add New. The plugin you want is called WPS Limit Login. Click Install Now. And click Activate. This is all you have to do. Redirect all domains to one domain. Redirect means that all of your domains will go to the domain you choose. For example, if I type www.diify.com, it will always go to the bankruptcy.com subdomain. This is very simple and easy to set up. You do not use any codes. You use the plugin called redirection, and a little trick. It will redirect all of the website pages of one domain, to its corresponding pages of the domain you chose. You can set it up at any time. I will make a video on how to set this up. The trick is to install it in the back end of your subdomain. You log into your subdomains the same way you log into your main domain. Same ID. And same password. Then go to settings. And at the top go to site. Have your subdomain redirected to your main domain. Drawbacks to Google Cloud Platform. 1. Google Cloud Platform was made for developers. So, it will not work as nicely as other hosting providers. 2. Google Cloud Platform has no support unless you pay $300 a month or $15,000 a year. Yes, I said $15,000 a year. 3. Google Cloud Platform free hosting will not work with their CDN because it is not powerful enough. If you want to use Google's CDN, you have to upgrade to their paid plan. This will cost an extra $10 a month plus the cost of the CDN. Please hit like, leave a comment, or subscribe. Thank you.